Hello friends, this video on triangles part 5 is brought to you by examfear.com. No more fear from exam. Before watching this video, please make sure that you have watched part 1 to part 4. Let's try to prove converse of Thiers theorem. To prove the converse, let's draw these lines. So once we have these lines drawn, let's draw the points. One unit each. In this also, let's draw the points. So once we have the points drawn, Let's draw the lines. This line is drawn, this line is drawn, and we'll observe that these lines are parallel. What we have done, we have just drawn these two lines at any angle theta, let's suppose. We have drawn these points one unit each with the side, and this is three, this is three, we have joined these two points. This is five points, this is five points, drawn, join this. This is six points, this is six points because you see one, two, three, four, five, six, six points, six points. Just draw on the line and we've observed that these lines are parallel. This is L, this is M, and this is N. This line is L M N. So L is parallel to M is parallel to N. This is our observation. Please make a note. What we have done in earlier case, we have drawn the parallel line and we've observed that the ratio was equal. In this case, what we are doing, we are assuming the ratio is equal because this is 3 unit, this is 3 unit, this is 5, this is 5. So this 3 by 5, you see right, this is 2 and this is 1 actually. This is 3 unit, this is 2 unit, this is 1 unit. With the ratio constant, we are drawing the lines and then we are observing that the lines are parallel. And this is why it is converse of Thales theorem. Thales theorem says that parallel lines means proportional. Converse, this is Thales and Converse, in Converse what we are doing? Converse, we are taking proportional points and then we are saying that this implies parallel line. So here we got proportional points and then we have added this, we have joined these and we have found the lines to be parallel. Let's prove this. To prove this, first let's Understand the Thales theorem once again. Converse of Thales theorem: If a line divides any two sides of a triangle in the same ratio, then the line is parallel to the third side. That is, this is the triangle. If this is the line, if this line divides the the triangle in the same ratio, then it is parallel. For example, these are d and e points. So the given is. AD by DB is equal to A by C. That is given. That is, it is proportional. We have to prove that DE is parallel to BC. Correct? In earlier case in Thales, you know, we were given that D is parallel to BC and you have to prove that AD is by BD is equal to A by C. In this case, other way around. In this case, we are given that AD by BD is equal to A by AC. That means the lines are, this line is dividing this, uh, I mean D and E is dividing this line AB and AC proportionally. That is AD by DB is equal to A by AC. And we have to prove that D is parallel to BC. To prove this, let's do one thing. Let's draw this line E dash, D E dash. And let's assume that D E dash is parallel to BC. Okay. Let's assume D E dash is parallel to B C, right? And D D E is not parallel to B C. Obviously, it's not parallel to B C. So we have to assume this. It's not parallel. We have to assume. We are assuming that D is parallel to B C. So if we are assuming this, by assuming this, let's come to some conclusion, we, and we can prove that whatever conclusion we are coming to is wrong, and then we can assume that whatever assumption we have taken is wrong. Correct. See, if I'm assuming, I'm doing, following the method of induction here, I'm assuming D dash is parallel to BC. And then, parallelly, I'll try to show that, that whatever results I am I got by assuming this is wrong. And then, that means that my assumption is incorrect. So, let's follow this. If I assume that D E dash is parallel to BC, then, in that case, by applying Thales theorem, I get A D by db is equal to a e dash by e dash correct if i am assuming that 
D e dash is parallel to B C. So in that case, the statement is true, right? Actually, this is not true. Don't get confused. This is true if we assume D e dash is parallel to B C. Repeat it once again, right? Since we assume that D e dash is parallel to B C, then this is true. correct. Now A D by B D is equal to A E by C already given. Right, A D by B D is equal to A by C. So instead of A D by B D, I write A E by C. So this becomes A E by E C is equal to A E dash by E dash C. Correct. Going by this equation, looking at this equation, I can say that E and E dash coincide because A E by E C is equal to A E dash by E dash C. That means E and E dash is the same point I'm talking about. Thus, we can say that D E is parallel to B C. Why? Because D E dash is parallel to B C. We assume, and we know that E is E dash, right? So instead of D E dash, I can write D. This is D E is parallel to B C, and this is very simple. What we have done? We have just taken any point E dash, and we assume that. D E dash is parallel to B C, and then we found that E dash and E is same point actually, and then we concluded that D is parallel to. Let's have some tips to remember this. So if you see this triangle, this triangle let's suppose A B C and D, right? So the theorem is true only if D is parallel to B C. So this is X. This is why, correct. This is one line segment. This is one line segment. And let's suppose this is x plus one. This is also one line segment. Correct. Similarly, this will be x dash here. This is y dash here. And this is x plus y dash. X dash plus y dash. You take any sector and divide it same. That is, if you take x by y. If you take by the other way, this will be equal to x dash by y dash. If you take this and the bigger side, that is, if you take x by x plus y, this should be equal to x dash by x dash plus y dash. If you take this side, y, if you say y by x plus y, this will be equal to y dash by x x dash plus y dash. If you take y by x, this will be equal to y dash by x. You not remember anything. Just remember this thing that when the triangle divide, if this D is dividing this AB into two parts, you get X part and Y part. Also, X plus Y is part, right? So you, if you say X by Y, that should be equal to X dash by dash. If you say Y by X, it should be equal to Y dash by X dash. If you say X by X plus Y, this should be equal to X by X dash plus Y dash. When you say Y by Y X plus Y, this should be equal to Y by dash by Exist by values. In this case, the Hayes theorem also really is saying that. Also, we'll prove that if this is Z actually, we'll also prove this. If this is Z, this is Z dash. Then Z by, or you can say X by. If you take X also, X by Z will also be equal to X dash by Z dash. If you take Y by Z, that will become Y dash by Z dash. Why? Because these two triangles are similar. We'll prove that. Just remember, in any case, Hayes theorem says that this is the triangle. This point divides this line AB into two parts, x and y, and E points divide this line into x dash and y dash. So if we take this part x divided by y, this is equal to x dash divided by y dash. So don't get confused. You can take anything. You can take x by y is equal to x dash by y dash. X by x plus y is equal to x dash by x dash plus y dash. Y by x plus y is equal to y dash by x plus y. Anything you can take. Correct. Just remember this D divides line. The real form of Thales theorem is this only. You have this line AB. D divides it into two parts x and y. E divides AC into x dash and y dash. So x by y is equal to x dash by y dash. That's the real form of Thales theorem. Plus, but all these are also true. Will be true. Correct. Thank you.
visit examfear.com to watch free educational videos, try free online tests, get the best quality study materials, study from the best tutors and mentors and much more. Thanks once again.